This week, it's already snowing out in North Dakota. An old family cupola gets a new use. And in the second half of the show, Dave and I take a trip through the salvage yard. This is the Rural Reflections Podcast. Welcome to another edition of the Rural Reflections Podcast. Podcast that's co-hosted in Carrington, North Dakota with Dave Nelson and me, Grant Nelson, here at the studios of Thief River Falls Radio. We're just a couple weeks out from Halloween, Dave. Have things been spooky out there weather-wise? Well, last couple days it's been a little bit reminiscent of the past two years. We had white grass two mornings in a row. Um, roads were a little icy yesterday morning, so yeah, it's a little spooky, all right. Now, uh, we are recording this on a Saturday, and you said it looked like it probably the storm, or the snow, not, no storm, but the snow came from northwest, which it typically does, and headed southeast, and uh, I saw a vehicle this morning that said it was from Moorhead, or at least it was purchased in Moorhead, and it had snow all across the front of the uh, the front of the hood and the front of the vehicle. So apparently there's been some snow uh, statewide in North Dakota and even some into Minnesota. Now, we haven't had really anything up here, just a little bit, and that's all melted away. So we're doing okay so far, but it definitely is a shot across everyone's bow that, hey, winter is going to eventually come no matter how nice the fall is. Yeah, and I didn't have to be reminded really because I, I know it's coming. I was hoping that we wouldn't get a reminder until maybe middle of December, but uh, I don't know. I hope this goes away. Let's talk projects a little bit. I've got a special one. One of the places, well, the the place, one of the places that our mom and dad uh, lived at before they moved to Viking is not so terribly far from me. And there's the barn there that they used to use. And it wasn't in very good shape. Matter of fact, the wind had uh, kind of twisted it a little bit. And the current owners tore it down a few weeks ago. And I ended up buying the cupola and the hay trolley from that barn. So it's got kind of a bit of a significance to us. And I didn't know really what to do with it. And I finally figured it out. Now we've got, I guess you call it a, a pagoda, whatever, on top of a, a concrete patio. So there's a frame sitting there already. And I thought I'd just mount it on top of that frame. So that's a little bit what I'm working on right now today is trying to figure out the engineering portion, which, of course, it's not really an engineering portion at all. It's just me trying to figure out how I'm going to make this work without it falling in on itself. But I've already got the cupola itself. It got a little bit dinged up on the way down from the barn when they tore it down, but I've got it pretty well straightened out and I think it'll be just fine. It's just a matter of mounting it and making it work. So that's my project going on today. How about you? Well, I had to work this morning, but uh, so far this afternoon's project has been assembling a chair and uh, taking out some garbage, and I'm assuming I will probably be getting some groceries. I thought out a roast and put in the crock pot. So my projects aren't quite comparative to yours, I guess, but uh, that's what I've done so far today. And to be fair, you're actually doing something. All I'm doing is talking. So really, my project is way <clears throat> less far along than the ones you're doing right now. So I, I, I'd have to give I'd have to give you the the win as far as projects today because really it's all just air right now until I start doing something. Although I did stop by the lumber yard and priced out some treated two by tens and uh that actually wasn't so bad you know all this covid has made it a bit harder to get lumber sometimes when i was doing the deck up here i was uh, finishing that up i suppose in september and getting decking was not easier easy five quarter decking for whatever reason was pretty hard to come by so i was really happy i mean i when i got done i had probably six pieces of 
one foot de- uh, decking. I mean, usually you waste a little bit more than that, but I was very careful because uh, there wasn't any more to be had. Yeah, I know we've been experiencing that here too with the lumber shortages and people wanting to order materials and being told, as well, not plan on anything anymore this year, you know, all that. So I guess that's caused some, so I suppose. Just manufacturing of that stuff, you know, has caused us. There's been a slowdown in that. And anyway, I know they're having the same problem here. Okay. Now we're going to talk in the second half about salvage yards, which is something close and near and dear to both our hearts. But I was asking you about scary stuff earlier in reference to the weather. How about Halloween? Has anybody decorated for Halloween out in Carrington yet? Yeah, there's a few people that have. We haven't really done any Halloween like we do a fall, you know, just some fall stuff, fall flowers and pumpkins and stuff like that. But yeah, there's, there's the, the people that do the Griswold style Halloween. That's been up for a month <laughs> and it's pretty awesome. I should take a picture of it for you. I'll try to remember to do that today. That'd so be great. So they typically do that. They've been doing that for years. They Griswold everything. Ah, Christmas, Halloween, Easter, you name it. Well, every town typically has a Griswold family. I was just driving around today in town a little bit, and there's some people who have got some pretty, pretty ornate Halloween decorations, but I don't think anything that approaches the level of the Griswolds. Yeah, well, there's, like I say, these people get close to the Griswolds. They probably have the current there because they've been doing this for years. So I don't think they have any trouble with their plugins or anything like that, but uh, otherwise they go all out. <laughs> Let's take a quick break. We'll do my online column and come back and talk about salvage yards on the rural reflections podcast. I'm Grant Nelson. This is rural reflections. My bucket list probably doesn't look like most do. Most of my wants are, pretty modest. I like little experiences and collecting moments in time that are close to home. I recently had one of these experiences. Now, I rode bicycle a lot when I was young. It was more about freedom than exercise. However, exercise was unavoidable. There was something so good to controlling my own destiny as I pedaled around Viking back in the 70s. Most of my bike riding now is on a stationary bike at the gym. It's effective exercise. However, my destiny on a gym bike is pretty much always the same. Televisions are nice, but not my favorite type of scenery. Thief River Falls has some nice bike walking paths. Occasionally, we'll drive them on the weekends. Not driven any path yet this year as I kept getting a flat tire. Finally got the rear tire fixed with some permanency and considered how soon would be winter's arrival and how little time I had to enjoy a little trip around Thief River Falls. So last week, after work, I traveled home, threw my bike in the truck, and headed back into town. I parked at Greenwood Trails and pointed my bike east. In the past, my travels were on the weekend and usually early in the morning, which meant I was by myself. An afternoon drive in the sun and bright sky was a shared experience. Most of the folks I met on the path were walking and they all seemed relaxed and happy. I felt a little like Mayberry as I enjoyed my quaint little ride with my sweatpants tucked into my socks to avoid the bicycle chain. Greenwood Trails was pretty extensive and the trees were turning color. You see more at the speed of a bicycle. There's a difference between viewing the world without sound from inside a vehicle versus hearing what you see. On a bicycle, you can more fully appreciate what you see because you can also hear it. A squirrel means more when you can hear its chatter as opposed to only road noise from the tires of your car. I drove down to Hearts Park and across the bridge and noticed what a nice resource this is for people who want some peace and tranquility. Those pictures of the Red Lake River do not lie. It is a pretty sight, especially decorated to each side with turning leaves and backlit by the fall midday sun. I pushed onto the dam and walked down the concrete ramp. This is a whole ecosystem unto itself. Birds, small animals, fish, me, the kid fishing near the spillway. We all got along just fine. I thought about how nice it was to indulge myself in an afternoon off and how lucky I was to have miles of bike path 
pretty much to myself. It also felt a little triumphant. I mean, I had this lovely little two-hour mental video to play back this winter as the bicycle hangs from a wall. There's always next year, and what will be, by that time, much more bike paths to enjoy. I'm Grant Nelson. This is Rural Reflections. Welcome back to the second half of the Rural Reflections podcast. And in the second half, we're going to talk about salvage yards. Now, people probably are scratching their heads. Either they're scratching their heads or they're going, oh, man, this sounds great. Because there's a lot of us out there who really like salvage yards. Now, some people might call it junking. They might be looking for something they can create something out of. Some people might be looking for parts for a tractor. But there's a lot of there's a lot of fun stuff to do at a salvage yard and a lot of good things happen at a salvage yard even even better than the the old sanford and son salvage that we used to watch back in the 70s dave yeah well my my salvage you know is primarily tractor salvage or farm machinery salvage that i do and i do it for a little bit of fun and and business purposes also but that's why i rounded up my tractor was at a salvage yard before they got their hands on and started tearing it apart and turned it into a real nice tractor by getting parts from different salvage yards and new parts also. But uh, so yeah, I I really enjoy the salvage yards and actually it changes. You know, there's one that's the hot salvage yard for a few years, and then after a little while, it's another one that's the hot salvage yard, and it's just kind of fun getting to know the people. And it's odd because I've kind of seen the rise and fall of a couple big salvage yards. And so then I just move on like a, a fickle person I am, I guess, but <laughs> pick another one that, you know, does what I need them to do. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of fun things there, man. You can go to some of them and you can see all old tractors. You can see all one kind tractor. You can see something of everything. Uh, some of the solid yards don't limit themselves to tractors. You might even see a cotton picker somewhere up in the northern part of the country just because they won the bid on it and it's probably got an engine or transmission or something like that that matches up another piece of machinery so it's kind of cool you know i've had some of my most relaxing moments just driving around thief river salvage here in town just looking at things and thinking gee what could i make out of that or where did that come from or you you see a a dismembered part and you look at your look at it and you go oh I know what that came from. That's from a, a international harvester baler, or that's from a that's from an old mini Minnesota rake. You can just look at it and you go, you can see it, and you go, oh yeah, I know where that came from. And it's kind of a nostalgic thing. You get to let your mind wander just a little bit and think about old times and maybe more simple times, and also in some cases times when the machinery didn't always work as well because it just hadn't. It hadn't been driven by technology like it is now. It hadn't been engineered. Of course, sometimes that over-engineering doesn't always work so well. But when you go to a salvage yard, it typically are going to see some pretty simple stuff. Yeah, and it's it's funny that some of the stuff you see, I, I kind of ding around with some old plows and stuff. And the old rope trip plows, at least the ones I found, yep. they can have been sitting there probably 40s models, you know, and that kind of thing. Been sitting for a long time, but the the rope trip mechanism seems to always work on them. Hmm. You don't have to, you don't seem to have to worry about that. So that's something we must have really put some some time and, and true engineering into that part of the plows and stuff like that with that kind of a lift. Yeah, that really, yeah. that speaks well of them that, that it works stuff. that much, that it works so well that much later. I mean, that's, because that's a fairly intricate little mechanism in there, isn't it? Yeah, I don't even, I hate the thought of tearing one apart. I have <laughs> taken them apart, but you know, they're, it's just a, a cam and roller and spring assembly, but um, it's all it's full of grease. I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> what a mess when you take one apart. I always think about some of the older stuff that you find at a salvage yard. Sometimes it, it was it was it was made up with a little bit of wiggle room and a little bit of slop, so it didn't have to have such close tolerances. So if you got a little piece of dirt in there or something like that, it wouldn't necessarily upset the whole apple cart. Boy, yeah, that's that's true on some of these things. You know, I mean, we have to have um, high pressure Timken bearings, you know, to make a wheel turn now, which we do. And uh, but a lot of these old things, they just put a shaft through the middle of a, something round and <laughs> put some bushings on, it and that was it. 
you know, wasn't really fit. It was stock size mach- um, machined shafts and things like that. And it's amazing that it worked, and it did work. You know, but and you, after you look at some of the stuff when it's really old, you can see how that machining, the result of it, you know, it, it wears fast and odd and so on, but it worked. You know, but a lot of times that stuff didn't take very long. You had a loose wheel on there. Yeah. I always get a kick out of if you go to a salvage yard and get a piece. It always feels more rewarding once you've gotten it because it's almost like mining because you have to sometimes you have to crawl through stuff of metal and maybe some weeds and maybe even some accumulated dirt. So you get there and then you really have to work to get it off. But once you get it off, you get down to, say, the casting piece that you really need and you look at it and it's like, dang. This is pretty much like new. I mean, and then you go and you pay for it, and it's, you know, a half or a quarter of what you would have paid for it brand new. And it's a pretty good feeling. I mean, you don't always pay a half or a quarter. Sometimes you pay more. But it's just a, it's a rewarding feeling once you get that piece in the back of your pickup and head home. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, it's, it's like you've really accomplished something. And it's like all projects, procuring the pieces and parts to complete your project is the fun part. It really is. I call it massing my army. Once I get my army massed, then I can go ahead and attack the project itself. Yeah, that is how it goes for me, too. <laughs> you got anything else for us this week, Dave? Um, no, I guess nothing in particular. Just uh, hope for some warm weather. That'd be okay by me, too. I I can hold off until winter gets here myself for a few more weeks. That'd be just fine. And uh, thanks very much. That's Dave Nelson in Carrington, North Dakota. I'm Grant Nelson here at the studios of Thief River Falls Radio, and this is the Rural Reflections Podcast.